So this is the old miners trailer, mine to market road that we're on. And you can kind of uh, make it out. There's a little bit of a uh, growth through here. So it's not the easiest to see, but maybe through here you can kind of see right through here. And this is the road trail that leads directly up to the mine. elevation of close to 2,000 feet and with the mild winter normally we'd probably be running into snow uh, but not this year and it looks like maybe some waste rock here down from the mine potentially or another one I'm not sure if this is the main one we're headed to or something different so this is not the mine this is just coming off the uh, mountainside above so over here as we go, you can kind of make out this miner's trail, mine to market road a little more clearly. So here you can really see more clearly uh, the miner's trail, uh, which you have this uh, rock outcropping here. And then right from here across, you know, straight ahead, that is the uh, original miner's trail. You can kind of see how flat it was. All right, so we scrambled up uh, a little bit from where we were on the uh, Miner's Trail, Mine to Market Road below, and we came across uh, the waste dump here. And it's pretty extensive. And I'll pan up here so you can see it. So that is where we're headed, uh, somewhere up there. So we're going to start making our way um, up this right now, see if we can find a good route. And we should see you uh, once we get to the top. So here's a shot from above of the waste dump. It looks like a uh, lot of material, which it is, but it's pretty fine material. Um, there are some larger pieces um, we encountered, but a lot of it's uh, fines. So we're at the top now, and we're going to make our way uh, back towards where this water's flowing, and I believe that is where the mine is. And you can see it right there, so we'll climb over this tree. So here we are, get a little closer uh, before we gear up. Oh, that's cool. 
Okay, so we're gonna get our gear on and we'll see you inside. So a little background on this mine. So this mine uh, was located in the 1890s. Um, development work here was done in the early 1900s, uh, 1905 into the 19-teens, 1915, 1913 range, probably ran into the late teens, uh, possibly early 20s. But the records are um, not very clear beyond that. And the first thing uh, we see here is a shovel, which I suspect may not uh, be uh, all that old. So we're going to start our way in here. And you can see there is a fair amount of water. Uh, it's probably a couple of feet. I'm guessing just judging by it. So. Take out uh, the shoring here. Let's see where the shoring used to be, as far as above, and how it's eroded away above it. It's a little uh, soft bottom here. It's not the typical. It's kind of muddy, so you slide when you uh, take a step. So I'm going to try to. Do my best here as I'm sliding around. Some pretty big timbers in here. Let's see, once we get uh, beyond this point here, looks like it dries out a bit. All this, uh, kind of these stalactites from all the uh, mineralization just leaching out. Looks like we get some backfill here. back. So it's hard to see, uh, but you can see that floor of this thing is uh, pretty thick with this material. So here we have the remains of a dynamite box. So this ground is less than desirable, but as you can see in front of us, uh, it makes it worth it because uh, we have a ore car. Good. Looks like it goes off in this direction. We'll circle back to that. And be careful here, since, like you said, it's pretty slippery.
It's a pretty cool old car. It's like an oldie. It's got a rear dump on it. So what makes this air cart even more unique and rare, aside from there aren't many in Washington left in mines, is it still has its manufacturer's plate on it, uh, which is Globe Ironworks, and it looks like it's uh, Sacramento, California. So that's uh, pretty awesome to see. You just don't see that. Normally, those are missing. So the primary commodities of this mine was gold, uh, there was some copper, uh, and also silver. Looks like over here, looks like we have some, uh, some sort of a scrap or possum, I'm not sure what that is. And it's like some rods, maybe to pack explosives in the drill holes. See that quite often. Figure out here if we got a hanging in the football here. I'm not seeing a uh, clear exposed vein. Um, kind of watching as I go here. I would guess this mine's uh, 300 or so, maybe 400 feet. It's not particularly large, um, but it's very uh, cool having the ore cart, very historic. Uh, here, you can see some of the quartz exposed.
All right, so kind of going off of this uh, drift, it looks like, I don't know if they uh, maybe backfill back here or hard to tell from here. like there were some workings that went off a little further back here and they were also uh, starting to do a raise here stop up I'll kind of climb back in there and see if we can uh, see anything looks like you can kind of make out maybe what they were following there see that mineralization and like a little bit of a vein If it pinches out back here pretty good, it doesn't continue any further. Looks like that's the end of the run there. Take a look at it from this side. See these, uh, it looks like some sort of crystal, crystallization. Not too sure what that is. Mm -hmm. That's what it was, unless it's uh, something that snapped in half, maybe. Could just be something that snapped in half. And some other timbers here. Another lump down the tunnel of the other car. this orange mine acid drainage um, is not always fun you can see it's relatively uh, deep mud some people complain in our videos the swish 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 of the pants but this is why because uh, we're not going to expose ourselves directly to this water or this material so we Wear waders for a reason. Good drinking water. So generally, we also uh, look inside all the drill holes um, and mines we explore. And this one, you might be able to make it out. There's a little bit of paper back in there, uh, probably the remnants um, of an explosive, but there's really nothing left. Um, it's all deteriorated.
So if you notice, it's definitely moving slower um, than some of our other videos where we kind of are walking pretty good through the uh, tunnels, but this mud material is uh, super slippery. Um, you kind of sink through it and slide, so it's hard not to uh, do anything but go slow so you don't fall on your you-know-what. This is a pretty cool view uh, coming the other direction. Again, the explosives uh, box on what remains of it. See the water stirred up, but it's you know, relatively deep and hard to see in now. It's a cool view of the, uh, the shoring and then there's some of the uh, cribbing with the gobbing behind it there. See above there how much higher the ceiling would have been. And again, this uh, gobbing with some lagging, I guess would be the right term, uh, to hold back that material. It's hard to describe how uh, deep this mud is uh, in the water. As you can see, you can't see down through it any longer, but uh, the mud's, again, at least six to 10 inches thick, depending on where you're at. So as soon as you kind of hit a soft spot, you uh, sink down in and just slide uh, whatever direction uh, your, your foot goes. So it's a definitely a more difficult one to navigate. And now we're back at the entrance.
All right, well, we just wanted to say uh, thanks for coming along with us uh, on this adventure uh, to the Tufty Mine. Uh, we appreciate you following us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And if you uh, like what we do, uh, maybe consider subscribing to our channel and giving it a like. And until our next adventure, take care.